Hi everyone, my name is Lucy Wilcox and I'm the librarian at Parsley Elementary School. So here's what I know about rainbows. I usually see them up in the sky after a rainstorm. They make a beautiful shape called an arch and they're filled with bright and beautiful colors. But what if, what if rainbows could be a little bit different too? Today I'm gonna to read you a book that's not about a rainbow in the sky. It's about a rainbow on the ground a rainbow that you can grow. Planting a Rainbow by Lois Ellert. Lois Ellert wrote the words and created the beautiful pictures for this book. This book is read with permission from the publisher, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Planting a Rainbow. Every year, mom and I plant a rainbow. In the fall, we buy some bulbs and plant them in the ground. We order seeds from catalogs and we wait all winter long. For spring to warm the soil and sprout the bulbs. Then it's time to go to the garden center to select some seedlings. We sow the seeds and set out the plants in soil. And watch the rainbow grow. And grow. And grow. We have some red flowers, and orange flowers, and some yellow blooms. We grow something green, and some blue flowers. and some purple flowers too. All summer long, we pick them and bring them home. And when summer is over, we know we can grow our rainbow again next year. Can you see this special rainbow on the ground? Hello, I am Mrs. Avery, the music teacher at Parsley Elementary School, and today I want to share one of my favorite songs with you, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, written by Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg for the 1939 classic film, The Wizard of Oz. Let's begin by learning one part of the song together. The melody of this part repeats throughout the entire song. So when we get to the end of the lesson and we sing the entire song through together, you are gonna to get to test your reading skills by reading the lyrics and singing along with me. Let's get started. Repeat after me. Somewhere over the rainbow, Way up high, 
There's a land that I've heard of. Once in a lullaby. Repeat after me one more time. Somewhere over the rainbow Way up high There's a land that I've heard of Once in a lullaby. Great job. Let's get ready to sing together Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Sloat. I'm an art teacher at Parsley Elementary and I'm so happy to be with you today. Uh, now you just heard Mrs. Wilcox read an awesome book about rainbows. You just heard Mrs. Avery sing my, one of my favorite songs, especially about rainbows. And we're gonna continue the theme on rainbows and art. So we're going to learn about rainbows and Roy G. Biv. Do you know Roy? Hmm. If you don't know Roy G. Biv, you will soon. All right. We're going to start with, uh, believe it or not, a science experiment. 
All right. So this is an awesome experiment. Um, I saw it online and I couldn't wait to try it. And this works out perfectly for us. So I'm going to make it larger. And I'll see you in a minute. Hi, everyone. Well, we talked about Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv is the order of the rainbow. Okay. The Roy G. Biv goes along with our color wheel. Basically, it's like your rainbow, except going all the way around. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. We can fit indigo in there and violet just like the rainbow. Now this is about the element of art, color. Now, color is an important one. Now we are going to do a little experiment. Uh, I found this online and I thought it was so interesting and I couldn't wait to try it. Now you're gonna need some basic supplies and that is some half and half or milk that will work fine. This is just some dish detergent, a Q-tip, and food coloring. And you need the primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. Primary colors. All right, first we're going to pour the milk or half and half, a little bit right there on the plate. We're going to take our dye, just like on our color wheel, a couple drops of red, a couple drops of blue right in the center, and a couple drops of yellow. Now wait till you see what happens. Let's see if it's going to work. Now I'm gonna take my dish detergent and a Q-tip, a little bit right on. Now our goal is to make it look like our color wheel, which then looks like our rainbow. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. Oh, it's still going. Let's see if we can't bring it back to the middle. Let's see. Oh, oh, look at those colors. Look at it go. Oh, it is appearing to look like our color wheel. I even see a few secondary colors coming out. Oh, that is too cool. Do one more round. Oh, I love it. Maybe you can do this at home. Good luck. I'm back. Oh, I hope you can try that because I was quite surprised with what happened with the colors. It was amazing. All right, now to our, our lesson. All right, so we are going to, of course, learn how to draw rainbows. All right. All right, first uh, we have the color wheel and Roy G. Biv, but we also have this. This is a graphic organizer. So you see Roy G. Biv, you do the colors in the middle and then you can write the words so you can remember. And all you have to do is fold the paper twice, okay? And of course, here is our color wheel. Now, a piece of paper, 
some markers, crayons. That would be the supplies that you need for this lesson. Anything you have really, or even paint. Right here, we, this is the first step and you need eight lines. It can be with a black crayon or a marker. And then you see, get, but then there's seven colors. So eight lines create seven sections and for seven colors. Here is Roy G. Bibb. Now you can color this at your pace. I'm just gonna go through it because it would take a little long for me to color it all. But first we start with red. Red is the farthest out, the farthest arch. Then you go in and you have orange and yellow. So Roy, Y-O-R-O-Y, green for G, B for blue, I for indigo, indigo, hmm, very interesting color. Think of your jeans, indigo jeans. Um, that's usually a blue violet and then color violet. Add a background when you have sun and you have rain, you look for rainbows. All right. All right. So I hope you are able to try this. I'm back. So I hope you're able to try this and do your very best with Roy G. Bev. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you later. Hey everyone, my name is uh, Mr. Walters. I'm a PE teacher at Parsley Elementary School. Uh, today we're going to do a little PE activity uh, where we are going to work on underhand tossing and trying to get at different levels and score our sock balls into a bucket. So what you're going to need um, before we get too far into the lesson is you're going to take a pair of socks and you are going to roll the socks to make a ball so that we can toss them. All right, so with my game, I've got four. So you want to try and get four sock balls if you can, and then um, that's what we're going to use for our game today, okay? So it's going to be called sock toss or whatever. So go get your uh, four sock balls, come back, and then uh, you'll be able to do our game with us. All right, so the game that we're going to do today is we're going to start off over here on my cement. I have three levels, level one, level two, level three. Level three is going to be the harder level. All right, I have my four sock balls that I'm going to be tossing. So I'm going to go ahead and put them there. And what we want to toss at is we want to toss at a bucket or something, some sort of basket that you can throw to. Okay, so I have this bucket here. If you want to just mark a spot on your um, cement or on your ground, uh, you could do that. Um, if you have a laundry basket, if you have a hula hoop, even if you have a jump rope, you can put that jump rope in a circle. Anything to where you can throw uh, the sock balls out, okay? Uh, anything to make it into it, all right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about an underhand toss, all right? So if I'm going to be with my right hand, I'm going to throw with my right hand, all right? So when you go to throw underhanded, your hand's coming under your shoulder. If I'm throwing at my bucket here, I want to make sure that if I throw with my right hand, I step with my opposite foot. So I'm going to throw with my right step with my left if you throw with your left you're going to be stamping with your right 
So I'm gonna take the sock ball in my hand, I'm gonna pull it back, and then as I go to throw at my basket or my target, whatever I'm throwing at, I'm gonna step towards my target with that opposite foot. That step is gonna get all our momentum and everything going towards our target. So it's gonna help us have more power going to the target. And it's also gonna help us be a little more accurate as well. So every time we go to throw, we wanna start off with our feet together, pull the hand back. You are going to step with that opposite foot and we're gonna pretend that there's a button on the ground. And when we step on that button, it's gonna shoot our arm forward and our arm's gonna come through and we're gonna release the sock ball. Now in your other lessons that you've done today, in your music lesson, your art lesson, and the library lesson, y'all talked about rainbows, okay? We're gonna use the rainbow in with our tossing today. So when we step and we release our sock ball, we want our sock ball to travel through the air in the shape of a rainbow. We don't want our sock ball to come at a straight line because then it's gonna hit the edge of our basket or our bucket. So instead, we want to try and create a rainbow with our sock ball. And we saw that a rainbow, it goes up and then it comes back down, okay? So when I throw my sock ball, it's gonna travel through the air up and then we want it to land inside the basket, okay? So just go back to all those lessons that you learned earlier today, the shape of the rainbow, and try and make that shape when you're throwing your sock ball, okay? So I'm gonna start here at level one. Now, in order to go back to another level, you have to be able to get three of the four sock balls into the basket, okay? If you only get two of the sock balls into the basket, get them, try again, all right? No problem. You can keep going and keep working at it until you're able to hit your next level. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna back up behind my little blue line here because when I take that step, I don't want to step across the line, okay? So I'm gonna step back a little, all right? When I step, my foot should still be behind that blue line. So I go here, I pull my hand back, I step, toss, make that rainbow, all right? That's one of them in there. I take a step back, I set my feet, step, toss. All right, that's two of them. All right, one more, I'm gonna step, toss. All right, so I've already got my three or four in there, but I'm gonna toss that fourth one just so I can get some more practice. So I'm gonna step, toss, boom. I got all four of them in there, so I'm gonna walk up here, get them. Now we're gonna throw this in just to add in a little more movement to um, our activity. I'm gonna put my sock balls here at level two. Now before you go to every level, all right, so if I've got my three in there or if I got four in there. Now I'm gonna do an exercise, all right? So I got my four, before I can go to level two, I'm gonna do an exercise. So I'm gonna do 10 jumping jacks. So let's say you have to do 10 of any exercise that you choose. So I'm gonna do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so now I'm on level two. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take a step back, set my feet, pull my hand back, step. I'm gonna have to make a bigger rainbow this time. Step, toss, made it in. Bigger rainbow. Oh, got that one in there too. And now step, toss, oh, off the edge. Step, toss, boom, got that next one. Now, I made three, I missed one. So I still get to go back to level three. It's gonna be a little harder. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my sock balls there. Now I'm gonna do another exercise. I did jumping jacks last time. Let's do sit-ups this time. So I'm gonna find me a spot, do my 10 sit-ups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one more, and 10. All right, did you get them done? All right, so now I'm gonna be on level three, all right? So as you go through and you play the game, all right, if you need to bring your basket a little, a little closer so that you have smaller steps, totally fine. If you need to back it up to challenge yourself, make it a little harder, do that as well. If you have anybody, uh, if you have a younger brother or older brother or sister, try and get them in there, challenge them to a game, see how far you can get it, 
and still be able to make them into your baskets, okay? Add in those exercises. Make sure that when you're stepping with your opposite foot, when you release the ball, we make that rainbow that we learned about earlier today. All right, stay active, keep moving. All right, see you later. Thank you.